What is happening everyone? I am Chase and this is part six of how to trade better. And if you haven't watched the others, basically I'm making a compilation and I don't know where it will end. You know, we started with one which pretty much gave the basics, kind of like, you know, risk management, you know, some what we're going to be covering, some charts, you know, catching flushes. I mean, everything of just how to trade better, you know, what you can prepare yourself for. We talked about filings. We talked about basic charting. We've talked about catalysts. So, you know, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, definitely go back and check through them. Um, you know, we've done how to grow a small account. So basically this year we're doing a 5,000 to 50,000 account. So the goal is to do a 10x account. Um, so we covered the first three months and the next video in the how to series will be, you know, an update on that because we're closing in on the second three months. So, you know, we'll get to see that and I'll also discuss on what has happened, you know, that was great and what was bad and things to look out for that way you know it's all about experience so you know if you're not out there learning experiencing losing money making tons of money you know you're not getting that market tuition that everybody talks about so today you know we're going to cover profits um, we're also going to cover a little bit with risk management because they kind of tie in together so you know before I just drag on and drag on let's hop into the video And we're back. So as we're covering profits today, we're going to talk about risk management. I'm going to talk about some of the things that have worked for me, some of the things that haven't, um, and what my overall process is. You know, like I said, if you haven't watched the first few videos, definitely catch up on those. Uh, it's a lot of good tools, good information. You know, I'm I'm a full time trader. I do work part time, just a couple hours a day. Um, but my main focus is learning, mentoring. You know just charting i mean non-stop looking for catalysts so i will talk about a friend of mine today as well um you know he came to me said you know hey man i'm really struggling you know is there anything you can do to help me out you know i'm trying to get back on my feet i said okay so i really took the time we sat down we talked you know i'm like hey you know what's going on what are you doing so we went through all of his faults and you know i'll talk about his improvement but you know first we're same thing we're going to talk about you know kind of some things that might help you but you know make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you like the video shoot me a comment you know what works for you what is your trial of or your uh, style of trading i always like to find you know new ideas and so forth but you know i'm going to show you this so i actually use a calendar so it's more of a journal um so let me flip open to a month i haven't used so let's just say uh, let's go with all right we're going to do august Okay, as you can see, August is blank. Um, so what I do every month or every week, even every day, I'll have a set limit and I'll have my plan ready. So going into the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, what stocks am I holding? What am I looking at? What am I about to accumulate? So, you know, let's just say, for instance, uh, let's say I start with 10,000, right? So my goal is to, you know, let's say I hit 15 and anything over 15 for the week then I will, you know, take that back into my bank account because, you know, sometimes getting too much size, you become too much too risky. Um, so let's say for the week, you know, I didn't hit it. So then I'll roll that over. You know, I generally have a monthly plan because I'm a full time trader. I need to be able to pay the bills. So, you know, let's say we're working with 10 and, you know, if I hit 15 for the week, that's great. That's amazing. You know, if you make five grand a week, you know, you can't complain, right? You're paying your bills. Um, so anything over that, you know, I'll basically either put back into my bank account or into savings for taxes. And then, you know, we can roll over a portion of that. Sometimes I will take some of those profits and I will move them into my longer swings. So, you know, ones that don't have dilution, that have a lot of catalysts coming, but they're just taking a long time to develop. You know, you're just kind of waiting on news because, you know, you can accumulate those. And I always suggest, I'm like, you know, I've talked to so many people recently and they're putting all their money into their longs, which, you know, I'll talk about my friend today. I'll show his chart and they just bleed down. They don't have funds to play anything else. So I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're a trader. You're not a bag holder. You're not a holder, holder, you know, hold the door. Um, you're a trader. So by you trading, you need to buy and sell. You're not buying and then 
going red and then selling and be like, oh, you know, getting down to yourself. So I definitely suggest using a journal, some sort of calendar, you know, having a plan, what positions you're holding on there, because you can look back and see, okay, this is where I messed up. You know, I FOMO'd into this, you know, I did this, I didn't sell, you know, quick enough. Um, but, you know, I, and I have this chart here, back here, uh, ADHC that we're going to talk about today as well. But, you know, and risk management is super key. So, you know, that's why I always say, you know, if you're working with a certain amount and you have long, separate your accounts. So, a friend of mine, I'll put his chart up here. This is his year, year account, you know, basically since the year started for his longs. As you can see, they've been bleeding down, you know, news, no, nothing's happening. And, you know, it's just accounts getting wiped out. And here is the account that I've been, you know, assisting him with saying, hey, you know, these are some good ideas here. So unfortunately, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell him what to buy and sell. But all I can do is just say, you know, I think this could be good because of this. I think this could be good because of that. So, you know, I'll help him out with a little bit of a plan. You know, I've known him forever, you know, a good friend of mine. And um, as you can see, he's made huge improvements. And the thing is buying and selling, you know. Um, but also, you don't want to go in too big of size. So there's some people that think, hey, I'm going to put 100 grand into a penny stock and, you know, it's going to fly. I'm going to make tons of money. How are you getting out? So if that stock's averaging a couple million shares in volume a day, how are you selling? You're not. So I just think that's a terrible idea. But, you know, everybody has their own way of doing it. Um, so I, same thing, I play small ball, you know, four to five stocks, you know. And it, even so, I mean, even if you're doing a few thousand dollars, like one, that can be pretty decent, you know, add up for the month, you know, for the year, what have you. But also, you know, and then you can have some that you accumulate with that larger size. So it's like, you know, if I have an average position of a few hundred, a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, whatever it may be, but I have one that I know is going to blow up in a month, I'll start peppering it. You know, just slowly adding, slowly, hey, I made an extra 100 bucks on this, 100 bucks on that. And then that way, when that stock does go, all those gains get compounded. And I just had a monstrous week, and now I can pay my bills for the next few months, you know, and then that's it. So, you know, and when we talk about, you know, when I talk about that 5 to 550K, um, so my goal is to do that every year, you know, small account challenge, 5 to 50K, and then I can basically pay taxes and all of my bills for 2023. And then, you know, I still have my trading account. So you have to stay diligent. You have to do your homework if you want to be a trader. I mean, if you want to be a bag holder, that's fine. But, you know, when we talk about profits, you need to trim on the way up. So today when we talk about this, we're going to talk about ADHC. So this is one we've covered in the videos previously. And, you know, we got in originally in the 20s on its first run. So as you can see, it went all the way up, all the way up. So when a stock does that and you're holding to the end, um, several things can happen. One, if it goes back down, all your profits completely wiped out. Two, you know, basically, if it does get even you know, wiped out, you didn't secure any, then same thing. I mean, you know, where'd all your money go? Now you're frustrated and then you're angry and then you're probably going to go chase something. So I like to trim on the way up. So you really have to get a feel for, you know, look at the past 10 stocks that have moved fast. Look at, you know, their breakout pattern. Is it two days, three days, four days, five days? Recently, we've been saying, seeing, I'd say anywhere from three to five days, you know, as like a churn on the way up. Um, and it can go anywhere from 20% to 50 to 100 to 300. So it really depends on the share structure, depends on the volume and what the catalyst is. So we'll talk about news runners in a minute, because I'm not the best at intraday for OTC. I just don't do it. I think it's a terrible thing because it's just you never know what's going to happen. It's hard to gauge on the volume. So volume can start tapering off and you're like, wow, now I'm stuck. Um, so I like to get in bottom when there's a catalyst two, three weeks early and just swing it up, just trim on the way up. And then, you know, if you want to hold half or 25 percent longer, you can. Or let's say the catalyst got delayed. So let's say, you know, we're swinging up here and then all of a sudden something happens, it gets delayed and it comes back down here. Well, at least you secured half. So now you're like, well, it's delayed. Let me re-add that half because now, you know, that catalyst is next week. You know, they said there's going to be a week delay. So now you can re-add it for that next week and boom, you know, you just basically doubled up your money. 
So it really depends. You really have to feel it out. You have to see the sentiment on stock. So if the sentiment is bad, you know, if everybody's just bashing it, you know, the stock's diluting, I don't even know why you're in it. You know, I talked to somebody and he told me what his positions were. And I'm like, hey, man, like, you got to do better. Like, you know, holding stuff from a year ago, it's down 80%, you know, this, that. Will it come back? Maybe. But if you have a huge account size and you want to hold stuff like that, that's fine. But I try and, you know, put it towards, uh, let's call it, let's call it Pokemon cards. Let's call it baseball cards. So they get hot and they fade off. So, you know, those rare cards are always good. And then, you know, those will always hold their value, but they come in segments. So, you know, was it last year, two years during COVID Pokemon cards were just all the rage? You know, they just, the inflated prices were just insane. Now they've come back down. Same thing with stocks. They were hot. They are not now and they're just going to sit. So, you know, I like to keep the money active. I like to keep it moving. So, you know, and that's just me, you know, as we talk about risk management, you know, you want your account healthy because if you're staring at red every single day, you're staring at all these accounts and all these stocks down 80%, 60%, you know, you're not a happy person. You're just, you're just frustrated. You're angry. But you know, if you cut the bags, you sell it all, you know, except for the ones that are true good longs, maybe you have two or three of them, not 12 you don't need 12 bags sitting there um so i like to actually break up my accounts so i have five so i have the challenge account i have my trading account which i use for you know morning small caps um options you know and so forth then i have another more like weekly bi-weekly swing you know account and then i have another small account um actually it's funny because uh, my grandmother she gave me money for my birthday and i was like you know what? i'm gonna see what i can turn this into so, you know, that account's actually at 200%. It wasn't a lot, but it's just fun to see. So it's like, hey, instead of having this money and putting it into my savings, let me go ahead and toss it into something that's going to take a month to compound. And then it's like, oh, sold it. You know, even though, even though it was like a couple, couple hundred bucks, guess what? Now I'm at 350 And then it's like 400 500 then 800 That thousand, that might be my, you know, next year's challenge account, you know, if I can get it to five by the end of the year. So, you know, I like to challenge myself. So the same thing, you're a trader. If you're not challenging yourself, you're not out there learning, you're just, you're not gonna succeed. Um, but, you know, same thing. So with ADHC, you know, we grabbed, uh, what did I buy? I think I bought 004, one, two. Um, they said they're gonna have news next week. I was like, okay, last time, you know, this had news, it ran pretty good, had a nice share structure. Um, but you know, when that happens, I don't know because it. I looked at the chart and I saw it looks like it had been loading for a couple of days. So I was like, you know, what? I'm going to buy half. So normally, if I'm like, I'll buy two million shares, three million, whatever. You know, let me just grab one million to start, or you know, whatever it may be, because it's already been up for a couple of days. So you know, we don't know when the news might be. So I like to accumulate. So what I'll do is, boom, I grab my initial 50%, and then I'll stack bids in. So I'll say, you know. 10%, 10%, 10%, I'll sit at 39, 38, 37, 36. That way, if it does come back down and fill, then, you know, boom, and then it bounces. And it did. Uh, as you can see, it actually wicked down uh, that day. And I actually filled some 38s, some 39s. Um, so, you know, I was like, okay. And then I think it actually got my average at like 0039. So then, you know, the next day, the morning, they had announced it. Uh, some crazy 10 figure deal is going to be announced next week. So, you know, it completely shredded. But good thing was, you know, I was already in, didn't have as much as I would have liked. Um, but then what you can do is you can set pre sell sets because you don't know it's going to gap, what's going to run. But, you know, as it's had trouble in the past up here in the 006 range, um, you know, that's some tough resistance. So I was like, okay, you know, set, you know, tiny, small increments on the way up and then that way they can sell. And then it's like, oh, you know, then I still have 50% just in case it comes back down. Then I can re-add that 50% and wait for the catalyst. Or I can just ride what I have and so forth. So as you can see, boom, 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 it came back down. I was like, oh, I'll grab a few more of 43s, 44s. Uh, didn't get any 43s filled, but I did get some 44s. Uh, so I was able to add, and then it went back up to 48. And I was like, huh, look at that. So you have to be methodical. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be consistent. Um, so anyway, I always recommend getting a trading journal. You know, as far as risk management, don't go all in, especially if you're a new trader, you know, on a stock. And then if it doesn't go anywhere, boom, one, you're bagged, two, you just lost 10, 20%, and three, you know, now you don't have any liquid to work with. 
Um, so, you know, like I said, drop a comment. You know, I want to know what everybody's style is. You know, when we talk about intraday runners, so, you know, if a stock has news in the morning, to me, those are trades. You know, trade it for the day because what happens, it's going to be hot for that day. They had good news. You know, it's going to be trade. It's going to have a nice volume because not many people are in it. But then what's going to happen the next day and the next day and the next day? It's going to come back down. Why? Because there's no more interest in it. They had really good news. That's it. So, you know, everybody's like, oh, I'm going to hold half long. OK, you know, have fun, you know, stuff like that. You know, I'm just I'm trading it for the day. You know, it's fun to get in and out because you're actually helping that volume. You're helping that volume go. Um, so it's basically handing off shares, handing off shares to each and every one. And you don't need to sell at the top. It's like, you know, you just have enough. Oh, quick trade for the day onto your swings onto you know, look for what you're going to load next. Because OTC, there's always something going on. There's always a news runner. There's always some company saying they have an acquisition next week. So if you're stuck in a stock, then you're screwed, you know, unless you're going to sell it. And if that stock's down for the day and then there's no volume, guess what? You're probably either selling on the bid, which, you know, is never good. Or, you know, same thing, you're stuck. So I just wanted to cover that today. You know, when we talk about profits, you know, same thing. you got to trim on the way up. If you want to sell all of it, great. You know, if you want to keep 25%, sometimes I'll keep 25, 10, 15 just to watch the stock and see what it does. Because then you can learn for next time what happened, what it did. So I've almost memorized a lot of the patterns and what these stocks do. And it does take time. So I'm not telling you it's going to happen overnight. But... Risk management is key. You know, make sure you're basically using risk assessment. You know, we saw a, a stock recently gap down 75%. So, you know, if you had trimmed on the way up and you're holding just free shares long, or, you know, you had half of your account size gone, at least your risk, you know, you only lost your profit. Had to pause for a second because my uh, my buddy here wanted to step in and you know share a little you know, insight as well. Um, basically, you know he's a shark. He says by the blood. So that's one of my favorite things to do as far as flushes. You know we talk about profit. So if it's a stock you're not in and that thing flushes to no end and it bounces, you know you could sell it, you can hold it, do whatever you may be. But flushes are our favorite thing to do. So you know as you be active, you know that's definitely one thing to look at. But you know he just wanted to pop in and say what's up, and uh, you know we'll check you guys next time. Peace.